guys, this is Nair Pump from the Underwater Photography Guide and Blue Water Photo. Now I'm super excited because I just got back from an incredible trip to Raja Ampat, Indonesia. It was one of our underwater photography workshops, uh, courtesy of Blue Water Travel. I'm actually here today repping Blue Water Travel with our new Blue Water Travel shirt. So make sure that you get uh, some of our merch which is available on our website as well. Um, now before I get into this video, I do want to ask you guys to like and subscribe if you like our content. Uh, it really helps get our content out there and you'll be able to see some more of it and some more video reviews and more tutorials going forward. Alright, so let's talk about the Sony a7R5. Uh, the Sony a7R5 is a full-frame mirrorless camera. Now it is the highest resolution full-frame camera in the world with a sensor of 61 megapixels. That's an insane amount of resolution so you can crop to your heart's desire. Uh, but I think it's going to make waves as just really the most recent uh, full-frame mirrorless camera to hit the market uh, for those high-end professionals and a more affordable alternative to the Sony A1, which is Sony's flagship camera. Uh, the body for the Sony a7R5 comes in at $38.99, which is roughly the same price as the Canon R5, so it's a pretty good competitor to the Canon R5. What I'm gonna do in this review is go over my thoughts on the a7R5, and also if I think uh, this camera is a good competitor to the Canon R5, as well as an upgrade from the original Sony a7R4, which is also bound to be less expensive now that the Sony a7R5 came out. So let's start off with some specifications. Along with a 61 megapixel sensor, uh, the Sony a7R5 has been upgraded to include five axis in-body image stabilization with up to eight stops of correction. So that's up from five and a half stops, uh, which basically means that you can drop the exposure down eight stops below what you normally would expect if you were going to get some motion blur in your photos. Uh, so you can shoot at really low shutter speeds and not worry about motion blur from your hands and from the camera. It's basically putting that sensor on almost like a gyroscope so that the camera will adjust the sensor as the camera moves. Along with an updated in-body image stabilization system, the Sony has an updated autofocus system uh, which makes it probably the best autofocusing camera on the market today. Uh, it's got a separate AI image processor that really is focused on making the autofocus tracking in the camera work uh, like a charm. The a7R5 can also shoot ProRes RAW to an external monitor, and it includes popular logarithmic picture profiles like S-Log3, HLG, uh, and S-Log2. Now, for those sports photographers out there, the a7R5, because there's so much data, is not the best camera in the world for sports. However, uh, it does take CF Express Type A cards, which are really fast cards, and you can shoot up to 10 uh, raw photos per second, which I think is decent enough for most situations. Now, I wish I had the ability to show you guys the camera, but unfortunately, all I have here today is the housing. I already had to ship the camera to its next home. Uh, now. Take my word for it, the electronic viewfinder on the camera is excellent, uh, it has a great build quality, it's actually very similar to the Sony a7 IV, so some housings, like this housing here, can actually shoot both the say, a7 IV and the a7R5, not the a7R4, and that's just because the a7 IV is actually a more recent camera than the a7R4. Now that EVF is a little bit bigger than EVFs you'll find on other cameras, uh, but it's great to use because you can actually look through the camera see all your settings, look back, view your photos, and do everything without taking your eye off the viewfinder. Uh, but if you're a bit like me, and you don't want to spend that extra $1,000 for an external viewfinder, you don't really need to. The autofocus system in the Sony a7R5 in uh, is the same through the sensor and the electronic viewfinder. Now the most notable thing about the build quality of the a7R5 is that it actually has two dials on the back and one dial on the front. That makes it really easy if you're adjusting your shutter speed and aperture and ISO. You can do it just with dials and I typically like to do my shutter speed and aperture on the back and my uh, ISO on the front because it's a little bit harder to reach and I don't adjust it as often. Now that's me being a photographer. If I was a videographer I'd probably switch it and put my ISO on the back because that's what I adjust most often for video. Now I do have a full underwater settings guide at Blue Water Photo, so be sure to check it out. I'll put it in a link in the description below. Now I wanted to talk about my experience with the autofocus system on this camera because many of you a7R4 shooters out there are probably wondering is it worth the upgrade? Does the autofocus make a difference? Well, as you know, the a7R4 was an amazing 
camera. Uh, it did a great job focusing um, on anything that I was trying to shoot, and I really didn't have many complaints about the A7R4. So I was thinking, well, you know, is it really going to be that much beneficial shooting the A7R5 and having that external processor? To be honest, I had somebody on the trip that was shooting the A7R4, so I did get to compare the A7R4 to the A7R5, and I do feel that the autofocus system is a decent amount better on the A7R5. I noticed that it was more accurate, it was just a little bit quicker picking things up, and most importantly, the autofocus tracking was on par with the Canon R5, if not better uh, than Canon's current offerings. So I do think the Sony a7R5 is the best autofocusing camera on the market. Is it worth the upgrade from the a7R4? Well, I personally think the a7R4 is a great camera and the focus system is great, so I wouldn't upgrade. But for those of you that really need the best of the best, I think it's a good option. What's really cool on the a7R5 is it has actually different functions that allow you to really dial down your animal eye autofocus tracking and let the camera select subjects. You can actually upload certain subjects to the camera itself so that you can train your camera to get better. Um, and I was finding that this is really the first camera where I was shooting um, wide angle and it was able to track animal eyes. Um, not all the time, but it's getting there. And every rendition of each camera, I feel like the animal eye autofocus tracking is getting better. I actually use autofocus tracking almost exclusively on the Sony a7R5, and I just feel like it has a better success rate than any single autofocus I could do or single point autofocus where I'm moving that focus point around. So for me, I just leave it on autofocus tracking and I shoot that way. Um, although the other autofocus settings are really useful too, especially if you're shooting macro, sometimes that single autofocus can be nice, but I've stopped using it. Now, when it comes to in-body image stabilization system, I did find that my underwater photos were a little bit sharper. And this is really important because you do have a 61 megapixel sensor, so your images have to be perfect. If you wanna be able to zoom in and see all the detail, you have to get all your settings right and you have to shoot at a high shutter speed. Having that in-body image stabilization system really allowed me to shoot at a slightly lower shutter speed than I needed to with the A7R4. And uh, I was able to get more shots that way. Now, image quality is the last specification I wanna talk about when it comes to underwater photography features on this camera. Uh, I do wanna mention that the sensor on the Sony a7R5, being the highest resolution sensor on the market, is the same sensor as the one that was on the Sony a7R4. Uh, so if you want to upgrade to the R5 just for image quality purposes, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Uh, with a 61 megapixel sensor, you do see the same image quality and the same issues that came up with A7R4. Um, I do find that at higher ISOs, uh, you do get a little bit more noise than you would find on other cameras. Um, and then, the, like I said, your photos need to be absolutely perfect, tack sharp, your settings need to be perfect, you need to have a small aperture so you can get as much detail as possible when you're shooting 61 megapixels because you want to be able to crop and use that extra resolution uh, to get a nice image from that. I did use my camera significantly when it comes to cropping. I was able to get some nice portraits of a ladybug amphipod that I never could have taken without having that much resolution. So there is a huge benefit to that resolution, but there's those downsides too. I typically recommend shooting at a slightly higher shutter speed, a slightly higher f-stop, just to make sure your settings are perfect when it comes to detail, especially when you're taking wide angle photos. Now let's talk about the a7R5 when it comes to underwater video. Uh, as you know, this camera is much better than the a7R4 for underwater video. Uh, it can now do 4K 60 frames a second. It can do 8K video if you want to crop and uh, export your final video in 4K. You actually can get almost a second level of B-roll footage by cropping that 8K down to 4K or even down to 1080. However, I should say that because of the large high resolution sensor, you're a video at higher ISOs is going to be a little bit noisier. It's not going to be quite as nice as on the a7 IV or the a1 or the a7s3 um, So for underwater video shooters, I don't recommend it as a primary video camera, but it can do great video And I was overall really happy with the video footage even more than I was with the a7 R4 now having that in-body image stabilization up to eight stops of correction really helps you get nice stable handheld video and I found I didn't really have problems shooting macro video or wide angle video on the trip, although I mostly stuck to wide angle video just because I was in Raja Ampat. All right, so we've talked about the specifications and all the cool things that this camera can do. Uh, let's talk about who I think this camera is meant for and whether or not you should upgrade from the a7R4. 
As I mentioned previously, I don't think that this is the perfect upgrade for an A7R4 shooter, uh, unless you really want to take advantage of that autofocus system in the in-body image stabilization. Now, because the, uh, the sensor is so, such a high resolution sensor, it could be a good idea to do that, um, and that's because you have a better chance of every photo being tack sharp. Uh, but that being said, it's going to be the same image quality, so I don't think A7R4 shooters really need to upgrade. Now, if I was going to choose between the Sony A7R5 and the Canon R5, that's a much harder choice. They're very similar cameras, both cameras can do 8K, uh, the Canon is a little bit better for video because it's lower resolution, and it can do 4K at 120 frames per second, uh, but at the same time, the Sony A7R5 can do 4K 60 frames a second, unlimited recording, so you don't have to worry about it overheating. Um, now, when it comes to photography, the a7R5 is higher resolution, but I do feel like Canon has better lens options for underwater photography, like the Canon 8 to 15 millimeter fisheye, the Canon RF100. So I do slightly lean towards the Canon R5 as being the better camera for underwater photography and video, but they're both very similar and pretty much on par. Uh, and I was happy shooting this as much as I was the Canon R5. And to be honest, looking at the files, it'd be very difficult to tell the difference other than a few differences in how the color rendering is. And again, you can just use your editing softwares to make them match pretty much the same. All right, so let's talk about some underwater lenses. Uh, I think when it comes to underwater macro photography, the best lens is the Sony 90mm macro lens. Uh, the Sigma 105mm macro is also great, but maybe less so for video shooters because there is a little bit of focus breathing. I think the Sony 90mm is an awesome lens. It's uh, got great resolution. Uh, it's got a great look to it. The bokeh is really nice. Um, however, I don't like the fact that you can't really stop it down more than f22. That is unfortunate, but combined with the autofocus system on the Sony a7R5, I do think that it's just as quick or almost as quick as the Canon RF 100mm on the Canon R5. So I, I think it's a great option for underwater macro photographers. The only problem is there really isn't a good mid-range option. I really feel like the Sony 50mm macro lens is not uh, fast enough for my liking. Um, so I tend to stick with the Sony 90 millimeter. When it comes to wide angle photography, I think the Sony 16 to 35 millimeter F4 is a great uh, rectilinear wide angle lens, especially if you're into shooting sharks or um, dolphins or manta rays. Um, on the flip side, uh, when it comes to a fisheye, Sony doesn't have a dedicated native fisheye. So what I do is I actually use the Canon 8 to 15 millimeter fisheye with the Sigma MC11 adapter on the Sony A7R5, and I find that the autofocus system uh, with that lens is acceptable. It's not very good on the Metabones adapter, so I stick with the Sigma MC11. Um, but I did most of my shooting in Raja Ampat, or if not all of it, with the Canon 8 to 15 millimeter uh, fisheye lens, and I loved shooting it. I thought it did a great job. Finally, I want to mention a really cool system that's available on a lot of uh, housings out there these days. So the Nauticam Sony a7R5 and the Merilux Sony a7R5 housing can be used with a kit lens. Um, that's the Sony 28 to 60 millimeter kit lens and the Nauticam WWL. Uh, which is the wet wide angle lens that can go on the kit lens so that you can shoot a kind of mid-range and wide angle on the same dive and the image quality is actually really good it might be even slightly sharper than shooting with the Canon 8 to 15 millimeter fisheye another thing that you can do is you can actually take the WWL off the 28 to 60 and put a CMC or some other diopter on the flat port and that allows you to shoot macro and wide angle on the same dive, and we even offer some mounts so that you can mount the lenses onto your arms uh, when you're not using them. So speaking of housings, there are a lot of Sony a7R5 housings out there so early in the game, which is really awesome. Uh, I do expect that we'll be seeing more and more housings coming out um, as time goes on. So this here is the Eichlite Sony a7R5 housing. I was able to shoot this in Raja for uh, about two weeks and I had an awesome time shooting it. I think it's a great housing. Uh, Eichlite's kind of updated a little bit. They now have a rounded out back area, uh, which is just a little bit nicer. It's not as sharp, um, but it's a great polycarbonate option for the Sony a7R5. It's got some nice levers so that you can do back button autofocus and all the dial 
dials and uh, buttons are nicely marked and you can see what's going on in the housing because the whole back of the housing is clear. Uh, so this was a great housing to shoot. I had a lot of fun shooting it. I shot it with TTL and the Eichelite DS230 strobes and I thought it was awesome. The TTL was accurate when I did uh, use it. Now when it comes to anodized aluminum options for the Sony A7R5, so far we have the Nauticam A7R5 housing, the Merlux A7R5 housing, which is pretty cool and it has a few different color options, and the CNC Universal Sony housing, which can actually fit six different cameras now, I believe, including the A7R5, the A7 IV, the A92, the A7R4, the A1, and the A7S III, and I think that's all of them. So <laughs> it fits a lot of cameras. It's a pretty cool housing, uh, so definitely reach out um, to us about that if you're just Sony shooter and you've got a bunch of different bodies and you just want one housing for all of them. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed my photos and videos that I got with the Sony a7R5. It was a pleasure to shoot. I think it's going to probably be the camera of the year since it's the newest and greatest camera. It's got great specs, it rivals the Canon R5, and I really think it's an awesome choice for anyone who wants to do underwater photo and video. Anyway, with that, if you want to get set up with a housing system, reach out to us at sales at bluewaterphotostore.com. We're happy to help you out. We're happy to give you some recommendations. Uh, if you want to see any high resolution photos, let us know. We can get you those high resolution photos. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below. Uh, give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you out there diving.